dear students welcome to rats racing against time for students in pathology the case history we present a case of a 60 years old man with progressive shortness of breath on exertion for the past two months the cardiac ultrasound showed a left ventricular hypertrophy A year ago, he had presented at the local hospital with several episodes of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, for which he was accordingly treated. Now, in spite of intensive treatment at the present hospital, the patient passed away. What is your clinical differential diagnosis? Identify the organ. and the changes in it that we shall be seeing on the screen this is the nature of the question an essay or a short essay and the mark break up is given within the brackets all of us know that this is a heart but then there is a massive enlargement of the left ventricle moreover it appears much paler than the beefy brown or red color that the heart usually has so a diagnosis should be amyloidosis fine this question has been haunting us as students for the past 50 years and shall continue to do so in future the importance of it is given in the enclosure and it cuts across various subjects as well as a difficult diagnosis to make something that i picked up work hard in silence and let the success be the noise let us hope that we see the noise at the end of the class think of the subheadings the subheadings will take you to the answer and this is an autopsy specimen retrieved from a patient with amyloidosis and there has been a mahogany brown lesion in the myocardium this was painted with lugol cyanide to produce a brown color which later on when painted with dilute sulfuric acid produced a blue color classical gross diagnosis of amyloid the term was first described by rokitansky in 1842 and subsequently rudolf virchow the father of pathology whom you are seeing on the screen term it as amyloid amyloid means starch like he thought it to be a carbohydrate and hence the name amyloid but later a couple of gentlemen whose names are here in the year 1859 found that to be a protein so amyloid is not a starch but a protein incidentally this is a specimen of the liver and i am not seeing the brown color there is an element of pallor in it it is shiny and this is a microscopic picture where the hepatic parenchyma is being separated by pale eosinophilic a cellular material definitions are definitions it is a proteinaceous substance deposited in the extracellular spaces within the tissue or organ and it is pale homogeneous amorphous eosinophilic and acidic all these adjectives are essential in your definition we do not want own words now that it has been found to be a protein 90% of it is a pure protein and 10% glycoprotein this is an electron microscopic picture of the amyloid fibrils which robins describe as non branching never ending fibrils non branching never ending fibrils 
this picture shall be of paramount importance in my class as i had mentioned earlier it is composed of non branching fibrils that i am seeing over here and here a couple of fibers are paired together by means of a p component this is a p component that we are seeing now what happens is these fibers are arranged in sheets which we call as beta pleated sheets this is a two dimensional description beta pleated sheets now when they are arranged along with each other they produce a three dimensional cluster that is seen so this is a three dimensional cluster of the beta pleated sheets and there can also be some receptors which will take up the stain for the congo red molecules with which the amyloid can be stained or demonstrated so let us describe it once again paired filaments never ending non branching fibrils connected by the p component beta pleated sheets united to form a three dimensional structure and these have receptors for the congo red molecules i hope you people will be able to recite this without faltering and draw this this incidentally is another way of describing it these are all the fibrils which have been connected by means of the p component which i have described earlier and sets of these are all arranged around a pentamer a pentamer is a five sided structure and i am finding five of these and this forms the center of it which measures about 4 microns nano microns and the entire structure will be measuring about 9 to 10 nano microns so this is the structure of the amyloid under the electron microscope and it is a diagrammatic representation so when seen under the electron microscope it has got a downward shape with an external diameter of 9 nano microns and an internal diameter of 4 nano microns described beautifully by means of riyas butter in the 1980s and from pakistan i would like to acknowledge this series of people for their contribution to labpedia.net which is worth going through there are two types of amyloid we'll be concentrating on one the amyloid light chain al amyloid which is being secreted by the b cells b cells are the lymphocytes which later on become the plasma cells and there are two types of it the kappa and the lambda light chain the patient may be positive for the ben stones protein also so incidentally they will be forming what is called as amyloid light chain al amyloid we shall be seeing this repeatedly so obviously we have to draw this also those days amyloid used to be divided into primary amyloidosis and secondary amyloidosis i take secondary amyloidosis first and there is a stupid mnemonic arthroscope which again i picked up wonderful whether it has got any meaning or not so long as my student is able to recollect it has got logic and this is the meaning of it a for ankylosing spondylitis r for renal cell carcinoma t for tuberculosis h for hodgkins r for aitis syndrome osteomyelitis s for jogrens c for chronic infections such as leprosy others which include bronchiectasis p for paraplegia with infection and e for enteritis crohn's disease etc so this is a beautiful mnemonic and even if you people can remember diseases such as tuberculosis hodgkins disease and leprosy it is good enough this is just a picture of a splenic vessel and as i told you it is not within the vessel or within the cell it is in the extracellular space there is a deposit of amyloid in the splenic vessel wall the stains for amyloid will be a classical question before i go into it 
as i had mentioned this is a hne stain in which i am finding pale eosinophilic amorphous acellular material that is deposited in between the cell in the interstitial spaces and in a hne stain that we usually use it produces a red color or a pinkish red color that we are seeing but in order to confirm that it is amyloid we have to look at it under a polarizing microscope in which it will be giving a greenish tinge actually the books will be describing it as apple green by refringence which is supposed to be a classical outcome of a stain with congo red please remember this this will again be repeated anyway there are some clinical signs and symptoms that can be caused by amyloidosis in the cns that can be dizziness gat diarrhea or constipation lung dyspnea skin thickening tongue a tumor amyloid can be seen heart cardiomegaly and arrhythmias probably this is the cause of death in the case history that we had given and in the kidney that can be the development of a nephrotic syndrome and this incidentally i am again able to see the apple green by refringence in the myocardial fibers or in between the fibers what are the major forms of amyloid the major forms of amyloid i would like you people to kindly concentrate on these two al amyloid and aa amyloid what am i trying to say so this is it it can be because of an unknown carcinogen particularly in the case of a multiple myeloma or a b lymphocyte proliferation which will be producing immunoglobulin light chain b cells will be producing immunoglobulin and plasma cell is a malignancy and this will lead to an abnormal protein called as al protein so this is one way of genesis of the amyloid the production of al amyloid then in chronic inflammation secondary amyloidosis we have got another type of amyloid called aa amyloid which means amyloid associated protein so in chronic inflammation there is activation of the macrophages the interleukin 1 and 6 are produced which lead to the precursors called as saa serum amyloid associated protein and finally there is a deposit of amyloid that happens these two we people shall and will remember and there are the other types of amyloids also which can happen because of mutation there is a product called as transthyretin and it can be producing attr protein or amyloid transthyretin protein so this is ultimately the subheading so what is the stimulus it can be a carcinogen it can be mutation it can be chronic inflammation and what is the misfolded protein it is this saa protein transthyretin and finally insoluble protein is the ultimate product that we get al protein aa protein or attr protein please do remember this particular one pathogenesis of amyloidosis is the question for you and it is great because i had designed this tablet column by myself please draw this classification of amyloid again not very difficult but then we should remember it will appear a little laborious but please put up with me earlier when we were students amyloid used to be divided into primary amyloidosis and secondary amyloidosis alone primary because the cause was not known but today it is because of multiple myeloma and because of that we get ultimately al amyloid amyloid light chain and the precursor for this is immunoglobulin light chain secondary amyloidosis as we had seen earlier in any chronic inflammatory diseases amyloid associated protein and the precursor is serum amyloid associated amyloid can also be due to a number of other causes so hemodialysis patients on hemodialysis chronic renal failure can develop a type of amyloid called as beta 2 microglobulin luckily the precursor is also the same and hereditary familial in the mediterranean region it can be that it is again aa amyloid associated serum amyloid associated protein 
sometimes in the brain in the nervous system in neuropathy such as alzheimer's disease there is a deposition of the transthyretin so all these are systemic amyloidosis so one other way of dividing is systemic and localized localized will be within certain tissues or structures such as heart the cardiac amyloid which we had seen cerebrum endocrine so in the cerebrum we will be having the alzheimer's disease whereas in the endocrine we will be having the medullary carcinoma of thyroid which develops from calcitonin so please do remember this particular tabular column what are the organ changes in amyloid we shall be seeing them so as explained earlier there is a massive enlargement of the heart the heart myocardium is pale it is enlarged we call it a concentric hypertrophy because all the walls are uniformly thickened and moreover it has got a pale glue attached to it and look at this one these are the myocardial fibers the dark pinkish red are the myocardial fibers in between which we are seeing pale eosinophilic acellular amorphous amorphous means there is no structure to it that is deposited so obviously this will be developing a lot of pressure effects it can be impinging on to the conduction system patient can go in for a conduction defect or a cardiac arrest so this can happen in systemic amyloidosis and senile amyloidosis and large pale accumulation between myocardial and in the vessel walls what are the modes of diagnosis of amyloid it can be the biopsy and these are the common sites from which a biopsy is taken either the skin or the gingiva rectum and the kidney and what are the stains for amyloid initially we had seen this it turns light brown with iodine that means different and chromium means color there are some stains which will be producing a different color to amyloid such as crystal violet you find that the rest of the tissue will be taking a violet color amyloid will be taking up a pink color same with methyl violet rest of the tissue takes up a violet color amyloid takes up a pink color fluorescence can be there by means of two stains called as thioflavin t and thioflavin s and this has to be seen under a fluorescent microscope so these are the stains for amyloid please do by heart it can be an mcq it can be a viva oc whatsoever and if you do write it in the examination you score the mark sometimes stains for amyloid itself is a question by electron microscopy is another mode of diagnosis and i had explained it earlier coming back to the organ changes this is a spleen i am able to see the splenic notch over here and there are multiple small nodules that are present throughout the cut surface and look at this grains over here these are called the sago seeds or the tapioca seeds which have got this kind of an appearance the same appearance is seen that is why it is described as a sago amyloid there are two types of the lesions over here there is a higher magnification in which i am finding the multiple small granules for post graduate students this can also indicate one miliary tuberculosis two lymphomatous deposits and third one can be amyloid a sago spleen so these are the differential diagnosis which you people can note down one is miliary tuberculosis two is lymphoma third one can be amyloidosis and this is it there are two types of amyloidosis of the spleen in one i am finding these are the splenic follicles follicles means there will be the accumulation of the lymphocytes so in that region there is amyloid deposition and see it is a stain in which there is a homogeneous eosinophilic acellular material that is being deposited the intervening tissue is unaffected so this is called as a sago spleen because it resembles the sago grains that we had earlier shown so it is called a sago spleen and in amyloid there can be an enlargement of the spleen it can go up to 800 grams the normal weight is about 150 grams but it is paler much paler than the usual spleen that we see 
and this is another lesion in the spleen itself in this one i am finding that it is intervening interconnected pale lace like material lace like material now i used to take that as a mnemonic because it is called as lardaceous spleen lardaceous means lace like so there are two patterns of deposit one is the sago spleen in which i am finding the nodules at the follicles two is a lardaceous spleen along the splenic sinusoids throughout the spleen it can be seen so these two i would like you people to kindly draw this another organ which can be affected this is for comparison that i had given look at the texture and the color alone the kidney here is slightly enlarged in the earlier stages later on it can be decreased because of fibrosis but more important is it is pale it is waxy and it is glistening waxy means you can feel the slippery nature of it without touching it and in the normal histology of any kidney we are supposed to look for the glomerulus the interstitium and the blood vessels these are the components and there is a normal glomerulus and there is a tuft of capillaries that i am seeing compare it with this the entire glomerulus is being replaced by a homogeneous eosinophilic material and it is confirmed to be amyloid by means of special stains so courtesy is from stanford health care in this patient there is a massive enlargement of the tongue a macroglossia but it is pale again shown by means of the arrow homogeneous and it is a typical case of a tumor amyloid this incidentally is the brain the normal brain is shown over here in another one it happens in senile cases there is an atrophy over here but when i look at it microscopically this is a normal brain over here but then there are some plaque plaque is nothing but a deposit of a substance which can be either above or below the cut surface and these are the plaques which can be seen amyloid plaques and they are found to be ab peptides found in alzheimer's disease i would like you people to kindly describe the histology okay let us see this one it is a pale eosinophilic acellular amorphous material in the extracellular spaces of the tissue or organ can you identify the tissue i'll give you one minute time can you identify look at these structures and then this we are not sure we shall see so here i am finding the amyloid and then this is the ciliated epithelium over here these are the mucus glands this is the amyloid over here and then there are multiple gas spaces so it is a section from the lung that has been having deposits of amyloid what can be the complications of amyloid when it is in the heart it is going to cause arrhythmias and sudden death in the thyroid it is associated with medullary carcinoma in the stomach it can be associated with undifferentiated carcinoma spleen there can be a splenomegaly stomach or the gat there can be constipation diarrhea malabsorption kidney obviously there will be a liver failure i'm sorry renal failure and a nephrotic syndrome what can be the prognosis of the amyloid al amyloid it has got a poor prognosis the survival is less than 1 year aa amyloid in chronic inflammations etc 1 to 4 years whereas in the others transthyretin does got a better prognosis more than 5 years there is no definite treatment for amyloid but we can prevent the development of a precursor protein and this is the specimen of the spleen once again spleen always whatever be the shape we identify it by means of the notch i look at the pallor over here this is not the usual color of the spleen and this is the splenic follicle over here and this is a sago spleen and here it is lace like called the lard 